this demonstration, I want to show you how we use the new Windsor Mandala and the Windsor Corners to give a beautiful card and quite simple but effective. And this is the card actually, this is the actual die made up. And we're going to do a similar version of this. This has just been done as a circular card by Leslie. And for more inspiration and lots of other samples, if you go onto Facebook, onto the Crafts, Crafting with John Next Door and Crafts 2 group, you'll see hundreds of pictures of everything made with all of the different dies in the range. So this is using the Windsor collection. So in that you get all these different layers of the mandala. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight dies in that set. And then you've got the four Windsor corners, which again come as a set of four pieces. And we're going to start by cutting the corners because I want to put them onto this card. So what I've got here is I've taken a piece of grey card and I've cut this to three and a quarter by five inches just to give me a completely different shape. And what I'm going to do is put each die, each corner die exactly on the edge. So I'm putting it up to the edge on the four sides. So one, two, three and four. And we'll simply run that through and cut it. Now, these are quite detailed dies and everything in the collection will fit through your Kaleido or other A5 machines. Because they're detailed, I'm going to use a shim plate. So I'm just using the Crafts 2 metal shim and I'll just run those through. And that helps to make sure I get all of the detail that I'm looking for. So we'll cut those, but I wanted to show you how the piece comes out. So when I then take the corners off, one, two, three and four. And depending on how you've placed them, you may get these little threads. All you do is just chop those off. So just use a little pair of scissors and cut those off. Now, obviously I'm going to take, because I want to use the corners, so I would take the corners out of each die and take the individual little pieces out. I'm not going to do that on this one because I've already cut these. It's a little bit boring for people to watch. So we'll just pop these back on my board. Otherwise I will lose them. Really recommend having a board that you put the dies on that you're using at a particular time. It means that you don't lose pieces as you're going along. So all I would do with that is map that onto a piece of white, perhaps, and then onto a piece of pink. And that gives me this background here. So you can see here, I've got that new background shape. And all I've done is use some other pieces from the Windsor Mandala and popped those on to give me this little sort of miniature card, like a little note look card. I think this is probably what we call an A2 in America. Um, so um, cause we all have different sizing so that would make that one so it's just an extra little bonus that you get from the corners so for the main piece I've obviously now cut my corners and I've got a piece of card here that I've cut down and I will grab my rule and just check the measurements on this one yeah it is it's four and three quarters square so I've got the corners and to add that detail, I'm just going to pop one onto each of the four corners. I've already glued these with spray glue just so that it's a little bit easier. I use some um, craft mount by 3M. So we'll just go through these. Okay, one, two, three, and we'll grab the fourth one. And it just adds that little bit of detail. It's almost like sort of a professional finish or edge to your card because it makes a blank piece look beautiful. So I've made some mats and layers. So I've gone, this is four and three quarters. So I have to cut a pink layer at four and seven eighths. And then I've cut another gray layer at five inches to give me that beautiful white to pink to gray. And on the card blank I'm going to be using, I've actually embossed this with the quilted blocks embossing folder. And I've made this one. So the next white layer is obviously five and three quarters, five and seven eighths for the pink, six inches for the gray, 
and then I've added that onto a white six and a half inch or seven inch card blank. So we keep all those sizes. But just adding that little bit of texture at the back really works. So there's the basis of my card made. So now I'm going to start using the mandala. So what I'm going to do to start with is to take the largest simple die, which is a plain circle, and I'm going to cut that out with the detail from the gray. And to do that, once I've done that, this is the piece that I will get. So you see, you get that beautiful pattern in there and the flower, and you can leave that solid and build up on it. But I want to play with colour a little bit. So I take the next die in the set, which is the largest of the, um, it's almost like a sunflower. And you'll see that it fits in. We'll take that down and we will cut that through. So I'll run that through and I'll cut that just to show you what that looks like. Really simple cut, no shim needed. But then we get that beautiful frame and a piece for another project. Now, what I want to do is offset a different colour, the pink behind it. So ahead of time, I've just spray glued that onto a piece of pink card. I'm using Crafts 2 linen card for this. And this is a little sort of trick that we can do. So if I drop the die back in, tape it down. And I want to cut this on minimum pressure. So I put this into my machine just with a basic cutting sandwich. I'll bring the machine in so you can see what I'm going to do. It's bang in the middle and I'm just going to run it through once. Don't want to run it through multiple times. All I want is it for it to cut the outside. And can you see the outside's all cut, but the inside detail is just impressed in because there's not enough grab and space to be able to cut those. Now, what you should do is to make sure you clean out the die of all the pieces before you do this, because it lays some back in. So we'll just flick those out. They're not glued in at all, so. Okay. And that way, I've got that offset color, which is the perfect to build my mandala on. And it means I don't have to have a circle die the same size or anything like that. So I've got that piece. What I want to do next then is to cut the smaller die in the set in grey. So you can see you have the larger die we used for the aperture. Then we have a smaller version as well. And again, those two cut together will give you a beautiful rim. But I'm going to cut that in the grey, which I've already done. And then I want to cut that with the detail in white. So I would take that die, take the next die, just clean this one out. So take the next die in the set, which again can be used on its own or together. Piece of tape to pick it up. Match it into the middle of there. And we'll just put those two pieces down together and cut. And this time, because I'm asking for two dies to cut and a lot of little detail, I would use the shim or increase the pressure on my machine. And I find the shim plate, the metal one, is the best way to take any A5 machine and, and add that little bit of extra pressure we sometimes need. So then I can peel that one out. Sometimes by doing this, it leaves all the pieces in the, or most of them in the die. So it's an easier way to do it. And we would then take all of those little pieces out. Obviously, I'm not going to do that on this occasion. I've already cut that. So then I have the white. So I'm going to add a little bit again of spray glue on the back of that. And I'm going to glue that down to the grey piece I'd cut. There's a little piece hanging like a hanging chad there. Let's take that off. Come on, out you come. Every time there's always ones hanging around somewhere. So I've got then the white being brought back in on the pink. Suddenly you see how that starts to sing. So we then take the next die in the set. And I just find the pieces I've cut for this. There we go. 
So I've cut the next die in the set in the pink. But I've then cut the next die in the set with the circle dot in the grey. So again, piece of tape, and you can use this on its own or this on its own together. You can put them either onto a piece of scrap or you could put them into the middle of another piece. Let's just get this roughly in the middle. And I'll run that through, which will give me that piece. And it gives me another combination. So there are so many combinations you can make with this. Um, of, where, of mixing them to together and making frames and using apertures. But by doing that, you can see here. I'll take that off. Again, there's a new shape. So there's a different shape. I could even sort of offset that there or offset that there or you know offset it there and see some bits poking through so much more you can do with these pieces so i've got my gray i've got that already cut and then finally i've cut the detail die and the circle for the last set together in pink and then the circle on its own in white to give me that pink and white circle <coughs> excuse me so we'll start to load these up so i'm taking a little bit of foam tape and I'm going to add this onto the back of each layer so that we've got that little bit of depth and dimension. I use a two millimeter foam tape as I find it gives me the nice sort of depth and shadow without making a card or the finished project too thick. Um, you can get three or four mil, but I find that that starts to make it that little bit thick. By the time I'm up to five or six layers, you can be really, really quite a deep card. So I want to work from the back forward. So I'll bring that one in. Match the points. And we'll put our white down. Then I want my pink plain. And that will fit in there. I'll take my grey with a pattern and I'll rotate that on the pink. So you see the pink popping through. And then I finish with my centre panel, which is pink on white. And it's a great way to use three colours to really get something different. And again, if you want to, you can sort of, you cut lots of these and you can fold these little pink pieces up to give you almost like a flower look You've got a beautiful 3d finish but i'm going to add a little bit of foam tape on the back of here just to add this to my card big bit in the middle a little bit there and we'll just add this onto the front of our card that we made earlier with the corners and you'll see the corners were designed to give you almost a circle so it makes putting that piece on really simple because you're following the pattern and there we go so we've got that beautiful pink gray and white that just works exceptionally well using the corners and the mandala and that's a spare card and again by rotating that die so it's lengthways we get a completely different look so all made just simply using the corners and the mandala from the windsor